Hey, welcome back to my channel everybody. Welcome to this particular video series on building a brand new Flutterflow application using the fantastic Superbase as our database backend. We are together gonna from scratch gonna build a goals tracking application. This application will allow you to add some goals in. You can then add some tasks against those goals and then you can then track the progress of those goals with inside the application. And the fantastic thing about this series is we're also gonna be implementing Superbase authentic authentication in the app. We're going to implement row level security as well. We want to make sure that our data is locked down to the users who are manipulating that data. And um, and the great thing as well is that um, we're also going to be then going even further than that. And we're going to be putting some very, very special modifications into our application, which will uh, allow us to kick off triggers and routines with inside Superbase that's then going to then update data with inside our application. So then we don't need to do that with inside our application put all the hard work on the server side we don't want to do it inside the app so I'm going to show you how that works as well so before we actually have a look at the application then we need just need to ask these simple questions on, on who is this series for of course so if you're just starting your journey with Flutterflow um, this walkthrough will provide the kind of valuable information really on app structure and of course there's probably some useful takeaways in there for you as well if you are considering Flutterflow, if it's the right tool for your project, you might be coming from another no-code tool and you want to see if Flutterflow checks out for your own project, then you're definitely in the right place. So do have a look through and just see if it builds up to something that you are looking to use yourself. Now, Superbase is becoming a popular choice for Flutterflow developers. Of course, we've got Superbase in there or we've got other sort of back-end services via API. Now, Superbase is becoming really extensive with inside Flutterflow. So this is going to really bring you to home there on how you can use Superbase with inside Flutterflow. And of course, if you'd like to follow along building the same app, so this app on the right hand side is what we're going to build, you'll be able to follow along. And the idea is at the end of the series, then your application should work exactly like this as well. And of course, along the way, hopefully you're going to learn lots of uh, new stuff as well to enhance your own skills. And of course, the application will be extended with your own ideas as well. Now, the series is suitable for beginners. So of course, so, uh, we always welcome beginners on the channel. Of course, you should be able to follow along and hopefully you can pause and start and, and all that kind of stuff in the video but at least hopefully you'll be able to pick up those skills as you go along and then you'll be able to then start implementing that within inside your own applications. So next up then, what are the application features? So we're going to be building a full Flutterflow project with user registration, sign in using Superbase as the backend database. We're going to implement that in really important row, row level security to restrict access to the data which is being associated with the user. Now, there's many videos up on YouTube that just kind of skips past using row level security, but we're going to actually use that with inside this application. Now, the application contains four pages and five components, so not a massive application. Of course, remember, in Flutterfer, you can create applications in a whole different different ways okay so we're, with our particular application we're going to build it in this particular way to suit kind of what you're seeing on screen here but um, of course there's many different ways of building these applications we're going to use some of the new features in there as well like theme widgets to apply to, to apply UI consistency as well and this is the fun stuff we get to use some advanced techniques within Superbase as well so um, you may be a beginner but my gosh by the time you get to the series you're going to start learning some some real key features of Superbase as well um, to, to, to enhance the UI I experience. The idea really there is to ensure that um, sometimes you, you can reduce the complexity with inside your Flutterflow application and actually put the hard work at the database level, certainly on the back end service level. So I'm going to show you how that applies with inside this application as well. Now, this is a full no code with inside Flutterflow. So you don't need to write any code whatsoever. You'd be able to design it using the UI builder and the widget tree. Um, now, we've, when it comes to Superbase, however, there is going to be some low code. We are going to have to get our fingers dirty with, with um, some, some sort of more low level sort of, uh, sort of like SQL queries and things like that. But I'm going to really try my best to keep it really, really simple in understanding and I'll walk you through how we go about doing that with inside Superbase. So um, uh, yeah, that, so don't worry too much about that while well, I'll explain everything along the way. 
So what we're going to need for this application. So we're going to need a free or paid subscription for Flutterflow. That's a great thing. You can get started right away. Please do the see the link in the description to grab yourself a Flutterflow account if you haven't already got one. And with Superbase as well, you just need a free account as well. So there's no money to get started with, with this. You're going to be build everything you see on the right hand side. You're going to be able to build that. Um, of course, there's going to be need to need to be a little bit of winning this to learn, of course. So um, please do stick stick with the series. Please do be patient. Um, and of course, the good thing about it is that I'm going to have a base project for you to use right off the bat that you can then start building as the series goes on as well. And at the end of the series, then I'll um, produce the final clone of the project, which you can then uh, take and then you can actually uh, modify yourself as, as you need, as you see fit. So there's just a little bit of low code there at the database level, but I will really, as I said, try my best to explain how all of that hangs together as well. So it's walkthrough time, okay? So um, please do get yourself comfortable for this particular series. Um, and of course, do hit me up there on all the social media channels as well. And you can see there as well that I'm a Flutterflow ambassador for Europe as well. So uh, hopefully that gives you a little bit of comfort in, in, in knowledge that I'm here to kind of help you along the way. So without further ado, let's have a look at the application and see what it looks like. So here we go then, let's have a look through the application then. So here I am at the sign in screen. Of course, I can sign up here if I wanted to, but I'm just going to simply log in. OK, and that's my email address and my password. So let's sign in and I'm going to be taken to the home screen here. This has got a couple of goals that I've already created inside the application. You can see here we've got the goal title and we've got some description here. We've got a bit of a progress bar that goes along here with a percentage indicator that sits in the middle of each goal. We've got the time the goal was created and this is a section here which will shows you how many goal how many sorry how many tasks are associated with each goal and how many are completed okay so I can simply just um, just sort of select this and you can see here that I've got some tasks that's associated with this particular goal if I go back and choose this one here then I've just got a couple of tasks there that are associated and of course I can come in here and I can actually just hit that one there and just say that it's complete and go back and you can see in the, here that I've got two here against the one that has been completed I can go back in here select that one and of course I can then see now we've got two of two completed um, now the goals and tasks are distinctively separate and um, with inside the actual goal if I just hold the left mouse button down here or of course if I was on a screen I could then hold my finger down on the goal you can see here now that I can independently choose whether this is in progress um, or it's completed if I go back to not started you can see here now that as I move the uh, the kind of the progress indicator here the the uh, status in the drop down changes but I can just sort of say 35% and hit update and you can see now that I've got a, a like a an orange or a, like an amber color that is um, representing here that's something that is actually in progress at this moment in time of course I can just go back here and I can choose the update again to 81 it will just go up if I just hold this down again I can then say here that actually is now completed if I say update goal I then get a nice green kind of color to represent that the task has now been completed and of course I can hold down this and I can just go and archive that now once I'm sort of done with that hit update and it will disappear from view as well and if I wanted to get those archive ones back I can just hit the little archive option here a little bit of animation and I can say show archived and just put that there to turn on or off and of course then the archive ones will be then uh, hidden or not displayed so um, that's fine I can just then just go back here turn that off here and of course I can hit the little plus here and I can create a brand new goal and I'm just going to say test goal just put some sample information in here and then just sort of say oh, okay well this is now um, kind of in flight I can say it's in progress hit create goal and it'll then create it for me so it's underway so very very simple application but there's a lot going on with inside this app so we're going to start with completely a brand a brand literally a blank canvas okay i've created some assets with inside the actual uh, sort of clonable project and I've got some theme widgets already created but that's going to be the foundation for us to now build the application so uh, in the next little section we're just going to then focus on actually cloning the project and then in the next video we're going to then start the the graft to actually then build the UI out so we're going to be chopping and changing between uh, sort of super base and the UI throughout the whole of the series so uh, yeah please do keep track and uh, let's uh, let's move on to the clone of the project. 
So the first thing that you need to do is grab yourself a Flutterflow account if you haven't already got one. The link is in the description if you need one of those, it's absolutely free. And then you also are gonna need to have the link which is also in the description, which is the base project. This is the starting project ready for you to then start building out the application. So please do hit that link, it will take you to this particular screen and then you just need to hit on the clone project option here and then give your project a name and then you'll be ready to go. So here we are then with our cloned project. This is our base project ready to go. Here we are in the UI builder of Flutterflow. This is exactly what you should be seeing right now. I'm gonna click on the left-hand side here on the actual widget tree, just hit that. And you'll see here that we've got our structure to our application somewhat already created. So we've got a couple of folders, one called app pages, which are just con containing this single home page at the moment and authentication, which is containing a couple of blank pages that will support our sort of our login and our sign up screens and then components doesn't have anything in there at the moment but as we start building out the UI then the components folder will start filling up with various parts of our application so that's the structure of the application with inside the widget tree let's have a look and see what else we've got so on the left hand side here you can see app state I've got nothing in there at all but we will be putting some some pieces in here for app state as we move along so app state will just track various uh, pieces of key information information like whether the filter bar is being displayed or not and all that kind of stuff so we'll be putting that in there we, ha we aren't using any API calls within inside this particular application because we're going to be using all of the great functionality that Flutterflow provides with hooking our application up to Superbase, so we don't need to worry about that. And within inside the project media and assets, we've got one asset in here, and this is just an, a Lottie animation that we're going to use within inside our application. You, you might have seen on the preview that we've kind of got this animated kind of arrow hitting like a bullseye of a target. That's that particular animation that's just kind of in there. Um, the rest to the application um, there's been too, not too many changes to we have no custom code or anything like that and um, the great thing about this particular application is we're going to be writing no custom functions or custom widgets or actions or anything like that within inside this application so where there is some changes with is with inside the theme settings so down here in with inside the themed widgets there is some setup that's already uh, been sort of created for you so um, I'll, I'll describe what these are actually with inside the application and when we're actually using them but generally they're just some preset styles that we've created and some couple of key widgets that we can then apply to the uh, to the widgets with actually with inside Flutterflow. so it just means that it just keeps a little bit quicker for us in terms of the styling you don't have to spend so much time with inside the properties and styling everything up individually because I've kind of already created these here but we'll walk through and I'll show you how all of that functions throughout with inside the actual colors and um, there's some colors that's already been set up in here um, generally the application although does support a dark theme as well so you can easily use a dark theme inside your project in here we've got a light mode which primarily is what we're going to use but of course if you wanted to add anything into the application to toggle between light and dark mode then the application will easily support the dark mode so um so yeah so the palettes have all been set up to support that with inside this particular application so um not much else really to talk about with inside the app details um there's nothing here i think of note to mention about we'll we'll delve into each of these as we start implementing authentication and setting up super base and all that kind of stuff so i'll walk through that completely from scratch so don't worry too much about that at all so there we go, just a couple of important pieces that I just want to mention to you is that um, make sure that you check the link in the description because as I move through the series, there's gonna be links to a clonable version of the project up until that point. So if you wanna check your own work, you can then pull that project out and just double check to make sure that you've got everything how you expect it to be. I'm also gonna make sure that I do keep these videos a little bit more shorter. I know that they can be quite lengthy when it comes to certain sections, but I'll do my very, very, best to keep them nice and concise um, it just might mean there might be more videos but of course I'll try to keep them a little bit more concise for everybody and um, one also important piece to mention is within the super base section please do make sure that you do follow on carefully there because you can't 
clone super base type projects so or at least databases or set up or configuration or anything like that so please do follow along more precisely on those and do double check everything that you're doing and the most important thing for me of course is please do like the video i really do appreciate all your likes across all of the content i'm pushing out on flutterflow and um and of course please do subscribe if you love the no code space you love building applications or want to learn more about flutterflow please do subscribe to my channel i've got loads of content on there loads more coming in the future as well so uh, please do uh, please do become a fan of the community as well so uh, without further ado let's now move on to the second part where we'll start